All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tycho Anderson, and I am an engineer uh, at Canonical, and I'm working on uh, LexD, which is the hypervisor that isn't. Um, and so that's what I'll tell you about today. Um, we announced uh, LexD in, uh, at OpenStack in Paris uh, about, what was that, four months ago or so. Um, and, and so we've been working on it uh, ever since. Um, so the first question is, what is LexD? Um, LexD is a uh, container-based, uh, we're calling it hypervisor, um, that uh, the underlying technology is LexC, which is a container tool that uh, we've been involved with for a long time. Um, and uh, so the, the way you can think about it, I'm, I'm calling it a hypervisor, but it's not really traditional virtualization in the KVM or you know, uh, VMware sense. Um, because containers are different. Containers, when people talk about them, what they're really talking about is a collection of technologies in the kernel, things like uh, namespaces, C groups, um, SC Linux, App Armor, uh, and th those sorts of things. And they're talking about a, a way to use all of those technologies to build a, a isolation. Um, so what happens uh, is that when you start a container, you, you put it into its own namespace or something like that. Um, and so it, when you start this, uh, another process, you put in its own process ID namespace and it, it, is the, um, it is the init process or process ID one. And so it can, it can do whatever it wants and it thinks it's the world. And so the difference here is that we're, we're sort of virtualizing the kernel at that level. So there's lots of little uh, init, init processes running as opposed to um, lots of you know, whole hardware virtualization like KVMs. Um, and so that's sort of the two minute, what is a container pitch? Um, so what, what is LexD? Uh, LexD is a way for managing uh, system containers. Um, so we're providing a, a daemon with the, that exports a REST API, which I'll show you some examples of. Um, it's also a daemon that can do uh, hypervisory things, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then uh, finally, it's a framework for managing uh, container-based images. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so I guess the, the, another thing is what isn't LexD? So um, Canonical has been doing containers for a long time, um, but LexD is not a network management tool. So um, there are lots of different ways to create and manage networks. Um, one of the projects that we have at Canonical is called the OpenStack Integration Lab, and we have uh, something like uh, more, more than half a dozen, I think eight or ten now, software-defined networking partners. And so all of these provide nice ways to manage your network. Um, we're not out to invent another one of those. So what LexD will do is um, it'll tell you about your networks, what networks are present on that machine, but there's no, no network configuration at all. Um, uh, it's also in the same vein, it's not a storage management tool. There are lots of vendors um, selling storage tools. There's lots of open source stuff. Again, OpenStack has an implementation of um, block storage and things like that. And, and so we're not interested in getting into that business. However, th this is a little bit um, misleading because we do want to be kind of storage aware. For example, um, since one of the things that when I talk about hypervisory things, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to allow you to live migrate um, containers between two, uh, two hosts sort of in the same vein that you know, KVM or uh, other hypervisors would let, allow you to live migrate things. But what we'd like to do is be uh, storage intelligent. So for example, if uh, the source and the target hosts are both running ButterFS, uh, one of the things that we could do is do a ButterFS send in order to get um, uh, more efficient uh, data representation across rather than R syncing and having to scan each individual file. Or um, we're also in talks with uh, another uh, major hardware vendor about uh, even more storage specific and container specific ways we can improve the performance of migration. Um, and the last thing is it's not an application container tool. So one of the things people ask me a lot is what is the difference between Docker and uh, Rocket and LexD? Um, and we kind of see these as sort of orthogonal things. Um, when you, when you want to do, when you're developing an application and you want to deploy it, uh, Docker provides this very nice thing, the Docker file, where you say start from Ubuntu or whatever and you um, install these few things, manipulate the file system this way, and then you run Apache. 
and that's that's how you or you run you know whatever your application is, um, and that, and that's very nice. Um, but some, in some cases, it doesn't work, and one ex or it's not sufficient. And one example is uh, at Canonical. Um, whenever anybody publishes an update to a package, uh, we we as as part of the Launchpad infrastructure, we build that package and um, and we run what are called the DEP8 tests. So uh, Debian has this thing where you can indicate here's how to run the unit test for a particular package. Um, and so the, the problem there is that when you install the package, you install all of its dependencies, you get all these daemons running, um, and they all need to be up and configured correctly uh, in order to um, make sure that you know, the package is running. And then when you run the tests, you're not really running the application, you're sort of, the, the test suite doesn't, is not like a great entry point. You don't say exec this test suite. Um, so what you really want is, is a whole Linux system. You want it to look like a Linux system, and then you just run the test suite and you, you see whether or not it works. And so uh, at Canonical, um, every DEP8 test that's run on any package, every time you upload a package, all of its uh, downstream dependencies get their tests run and all, and all that kind of stuff. Um, all of those are run inside containers. Uh, and so that's kind of the distinction where the application containers are very nice if you're a developer and you're writing an app. Uh, and system containers are nice if you're trying to do uh, systems engineering or you, you, for whatever reason, you want a full Linux system. And so that's kind of the distinction. Um, so now uh, I've hopefully managed to convince you that uh, LexD is a container-based thing. And so now uh, I will use this what is LexD uh, slide for the, as the outline for the rest of my talk. So next thing we'll talk about is uh, the REST API. And uh, so we have several endpoints, um, like just traditional REST endpoints. Uh, the first one is containers. Um, this is where you, uh, you, know, you, you uh, can start, stop, create, uh, delete, snapshot, uh, other things, do various operations on um, containers. Uh, the second endpoint is images, which is uh, an endpoint that you can use to manipulate images uh, using this kind of this image-based workflow that I've talked about a little bit. Um, and then uh, the last is networks. So this is an endpoint you could use to, to ask, you know, what networks um, does this host have, which containers are on, which bridge, that kind of thing. Um, and then when there's, lastly, there's some other administrative ones, uh, things like, uh, you know, op, so for example, uh, create is an asynchronous operation because it might take a while, and so there's a way to ask the state of operations. You can ask, for example, you could ask uh, Lexty instance, what's your underlying base file system if you wanted to do some of the file system specific optimizations that I talked about earlier. Um, and then all of this is secured by uh, client certificates and uh, TLS 1.2, so uh, we're, we're trying to do the industry standard thing there. Um, so. I'm just uh, going to throw up a little bit of gobbledygook here. This is uh, a wget call that you might use to uh, create a container. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there about getting the certificates right. None of that's really important. Um, it's really just you, you see the HTTPS colon. That's the URL you would use to create. You post some data, the name, and then I have in there dot, dot, dot. This is basically just uh, where does the image come from? You know, um, where, where or is uh, what selects are you going to use as the base image to create this container? And then the response you get looks something like this. It's just some JSON that says, uh, "Okay, we're running it, and here's the operation key." Um, and so I, I'm going to do this a few more times. Hopefully, uh, the code, you know, all this crap, doesn't scare anyone. The the real goal here is um, we have been looking for input on how to design this API from uh, both our partners and internally, uh, and we would like your input as well. Uh, if you are a potential user of LexD and you, we have a, a spec on our GitHub uh, page that describes how to use the API, and if you see something there that looks ugly, please tell us, um, because we don't want it to be ugly, we want it to be nice, and we would like you to use it. So. Um, a second endpoint, this is uh, you, maybe now you've created a container and you do a get. Um, and so it tells you some stuff, including the container's name. Um, and then there's a thing here that's empty called configuration. Uh, configuration in this case might say something like, this, uh, this container is allowed to use 25% of the RAM on this machine. And the reason it's 25% and not a specific amount is if you s suddenly migrate containers between machines with different amounts of RAM, 
you may want you may want to rewrite that rule. So, for example, if you have a big compute host and when things spin up, you migrate this container over to that big compute host and it uses lots of RAM. You, you don't want to stick with your one gigabyte limit that you originally had. You want to go to 25% of the big compute host RAM. Um, or other things like CPU sets, things like that. There are all sorts of things you need to think about when you're migrating um, and how to rewrite that kind of stuff. So th those are all configuration things. And then profiles are basically just collections of configurations. So for example, if you're a web host and you sell one kind of container that's a one CPU, 512 megs of RAM thing, you can just set that in a profile and then every, uh, and you, you, every container, every person who buys one of those um, gets assigned that profile. And then the last bit here is just a, some status information. It tells you um, whether or not the container is running and, and some other information about it. Um, so the network's endpoint, uh, here I just ran this again on my laptop on my way here. Uh, and so I have, it tells me I have four interfaces. I can't, there's, this is read only, I can't write to it at all. Um, but it tells me I have my local loop back, I have the wireless card on here. I have uh, Lexi BR0, which is an interface that gets created when you app get install Lexi. Uh, and then I have uh, VR BR0, which is another interface that gets created when you run libvirt. And so these are just all things that I run on my laptop here. And so that's, uh, those are the interfaces that I had. So that, this is just an example of this is what you, what you can ask Lexi about. You could ask Lexi, tell me all the containers that are on Lexi BR0, and it would give you a list of those containers. But you cannot create any networks or anything like that. OK, so the, hopefully that's the end of all the scary stuff. And next is some pictures. So uh, I've told you a little bit about hypervisory things. Um, so what does that look like? So the first is snapshotting. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a cool thing. Uh, suppose that you have an application that takes a while to get into a steady state. Um, you can think of like a, a Tomcat or some sort of JVM based thing. It takes a while to boot up, but once it's there, it's good to go. Um, one of the things you can do with LexD is you can do what's called a stateful snapshot. So you can actually uh, turn, you know, get, get the container all going the way you want it, start the thing, get it into a steady state, and then snapshot serialize the RAM state as well as the disk state. And then you can, you can call that collection of those two things an image. And then you can start 50 of those images or whatever. And the idea is that it will be faster to start those to restore from the serialized RAM state than you have, than it would be to just start Tomcat cold. So if you want to scale out a bunch of those really fast, um, that would be a nice way to do that. Um, and that's, again, using the same technology that we're using to migrate, which is uh, a tool called CreU by uh, the folks at Parallels that we've been contributing to recently. Um, the next thing is injection. Uh, so, for example, if you have uh, a container and you create it and now you want to drop some cloud init data in there to start something, you know, you want to, here's the set of packages to install or here's how you attach to the system or whatever cloud init stuff you want, um, one of the things you expect your hypervisor to be able to do is drop those files in or read those files out uh, in order to uh, manipulate the state of the container. So that's another thing that LexD provides a nice REST API so you can um, get containers, in, uh, get uh, information in and out of the file system, including if you know, it's some crazy block device, LexD knows how to mount it and do all that kind of stuff. Um, and the last thing is the migration itself. So. Um, if you have two hosts and you want to migrate a container from one to the other, uh, there's a, the one thing you don't want is a lot of downtime. If you're spending all this time engineering migration, that's not uh, something you're after. And so the way that people traditionally engineer migration engines and the way that uh, we're uh, looking at doing it with, uh, again, the folks at Parallels um, and a tool called PHAL is that uh, you do this kind of iterative thing where you transfer as much state as you possibly can, and then you say, okay, since the last time I started transferring state, what's the delta? And then you transfer a little bit less and a little bit less until eventually you just you make the jump and you go. Um, and then that, the idea is that the amount of time that things are down is very small. Um, and, and so you need a, a daemon on both ends in order to do that negotiation. And for example, if the restore on this side fails for whatever reason, maybe it doesn't have enough RAM or who knows what, then you need a, a, a nice landing pad for the fish or the, the host uh, or the container so that it can land and then potentially go back uh, if it needs to, if something uh, got screwed up. And so 
uh, with LexD, we're, um, we're, engin we're building this in from the ground up, and then uh, we're using this, the, the, all of this takes place uh, over WebSockets, so the entire migration um, procedure is negotiated over WebSockets, and the benefit of that is that we don't need any external um, connections or uh, anything like that. We don't have to be able to open another socket. As long as the two hosts can talk HTTP to each other, they can migrate in between. Um, and additionally, uh, one of the features that we're looking at implementing in the future is that the client can act as a relay. So if you're trying to migrate from AWS to, East, uh, to uh, some uh, Azure or whatever, you can, uh, you know, you can download through your client the container and then send it over to the other network. Um, and so the last thing is uh, a framework for, LexD is a framework for managing container-based images. Um, and so one of the things I described earlier was you can snapshot uh, potentially running containers as images. Uh, and these potentially running containers um, are uh, full of you know, all the states and everything that you set up. And then you, then you can send that off and you can publish that uh, to an image server and all LexD images function as image servers. So you can publish that to your LexD instance uh, and then other users can go and deploy your image if they like it or um, you know, manipulate it and publish their own or, or whatever. Um, and then, so we're also providing a, a kind of a really tiny version of access control where uh, you can publish either public or private images. And uh, an image is private, that means uh, everybody who doesn't know the secret code to the server can uh, not see it. But everyone who does, there's no like per user images right now. It's something that we could look at adding in the future if people are interested. Um, so uh, LXD roadmap uh, 0 0.1 uh, will be released in the last week of January. Um, this is container management only. Uh, this is basically the, what we're calling the minimum viable product. Uh, and so um, the release actually was supposed to happen today, but instead I'm here giving this talk to you and our, the other uh, developers are all uh, busy also doing uh, LexC work right now. Um, so th this will be, you know, the cre create, start, stop. I've actually got a demo here that I can show you for a little bit uh, about uh, what's possible with, what will be possible with 0 0.1. Um, LexD 0 0.2 will be released February 18th. And the reason I can tell you it's exactly February 18th is because that is the day before the Ubuntu feature freeze date. Um, and so this will have our full uh, images uh, support as well as experimental support for migration. Uh, the reason that I say experimental, um, if you saw our announcement of LexD in uh, uh, OpenStack Paris, one of the things that I did was I actually had a, a running Doom and I migrated that Doom in between containers. Um, and that works, but there's still a lot of caveats. Um, there's a lot of things that are just don't work exactly right when you, when you start migrating again. So. Um, I probably wouldn't use it in production, but uh, we will have at least what I what I demoed in uh, in OpenStack Paris to to be uh, will will be available. Um, and then 0.3 is a full specification implementation. So this is all of the things like profiles and um, the other configuration bits and um, other minor bits that I talked about uh, will all be available. And this will uh, be available sometime this summer. Uh, and then another piece that I've been getting a lot of questions about, um, uh, one of the other things that we talked about in OpenStack Paris was uh, hardware hardened containers. Um, so we're talking with uh, several large, uh, I'm sure you know them, hardware vendors, um, about what we can do to use either what's on the silicon now, um, maybe VTX or whatever extensions, um, somehow to make our containers uh, more robust uh, securely, and then also um, what we can do in the future. So if we could design anything, what would we want it to look like so that we could make containers more secure? Um, so I have a little demo here. So is, I guess I, here I'll... Uh, 10 minutes, okay, cool. Uh, so I'll do a add of, I'm running a LexD instance. 
here on my host. And so you can see here it prompts me for the certificate fingerprint. Um, I say, uh, yes, that's okay because um, somehow I memorized the fingerprint before or whatever. Um, and then I, it, it asked me a password. Uh, and that's, that's kind of our one little access control where you can, uh, you can there, each LexD has a password and if you know that password you can get in and kind of do everything. So, um, so now I'll, uh, I'll create an image. Um, so the syntax you see here, Im images colon Ubuntu, um, is, uh, is just a shorthand for whatever the latest long-term service release is. And we have, if you look again in our documents, uh, we have some mention of uh, other, how you could get a particular release of Ubuntu if you wanted to. Um, so now I can, I can start this container. Um, and the, the, another thing to note is that this client is implemented uh, using the API. So this is basically just a, a little REST client. Um, and there's nothing really fancy about this. The fanciness is all happening on the server side. Uh, so if we look here, um, you can see kind of on the right-hand side here, you can see there's sbin init and then all the child processes. This is kind of what you get when you get a new Ubuntu container. This is all the stuff that's running. Um, and then on the left-hand side, this is a particularly interesting piece. You can see, you know, there's me, my user, there's root, and then there's this funny user 600,000. And so what that is, is that's actually, you can see the user namespaces at work there. So this uh, init process is running as user ID 600,000. So for example, if for whatever reason, somebody inside the container breaks out and they're being very nefarious and they want to attack my system, they still uh, can only do everything that user 600,000 can do. And PS looked in my Etsy password and couldn't find a user 600,000 because there isn't one. And so uh, assuming that traditional Unix you know, user protections exist, even if somebody breaks out of this container, they're still um, just jailed into that one user. Uh, let's see, what other cool stuff can I show you? So, so, um, uh oh, I gotta type the right thing. So, here I just ran um, cat etsy issue, which tells you um, the version of uh, the the host that's running. We could, we can, you know, also cat Etsy hosts. We can, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other interesting files here. So I can download files too, um, or there's also a file push command if I had an interesting file that I wanted to push. Um, so that is sort of my uh, summary of LexD. Um, does anybody have any questions about uh, anything that I've covered? Yep. Sure. So I'm an OpenStack Nova guy. So my questions are all about that, I suppose. So I see on the LXC web, LXD website that there's plans to integrate with Nova. Do you know what the timeline is for that work? Yes, uh, there's a guy named Chuck Short who is doing that work. Um, and he has a, a prototype um, that I think the plan is for it to be in Ubuntu OpenStack next cycle. And then I think, uh, I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to try and upstream it. Uh, I'm not sure what his timeline is for that. Um, but I, I know that the, the, his current prototype is in Ubuntu OpenStack, and, and the LexD-based one will be in, in the next uh, Ubuntu OpenStack. Is, is that what Nova Compute Flex is? Is that the prototype? Yes. yes. So Flex is the code name that we were using for LexD before, uh, before we released it, or before we announced it. So. Okay, but Nova Compute Flex isn't actually using LXD yet because LXD isn't released. Is right, exactly. So, so that's why. I mean, what, that's one of the reasons that we have to do a uh, release on the day before the feature freeze because Nova Compute uh, LexD will uh, or Nova, Nova Compute Flex 
will use LexD, and so we need that in our archives in, in order to, um, to make that happen. Okay, cool, thanks. So you mentioned that this is different than Docker because Docker is mostly um, application oriented. What does LXD do that Docker cannot do and vice versa? Um, well, I, th I think it's more about uh, the tool chain design. So, for example, uh, in the in the era of uh, you know in, uh, immutable infrastructure, you one could argue that it doesn't really make a lot of sense for Docker to be able to do migration because it's immutable. So, there's I mean, there's no state. So, what's there to migrate? Why don't you just fire up another one and throw the one that you didn't like away? Um, so there's a lot of decisions like that where we're kind of uh, featuring migration. Uh, you, you know, one, one could argue that the Docker people, if you're doing it the right way, you aren't migrating, or you shouldn't be migrating. So there's, I think there's a lot of just, it's, I mean, it's all, fundamentally, it's all using the same Linux kernel technology. It's all using the, you know, the namespaces, C groups, all that kind of stuff to, to implement it. So there's, there's nothing to stop you from doing what one could, one or the other could do. It's, it's really about design decisions uh, that we've made and that they've made. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, well, there, actually, there is people at Google um, that are uh, working on um, live migration for Docker. So, uh, why can't they use that? That's a good sign. Yeah, I'm not sure what the big difference is besides, you know, is Docker separate from these abilities, or? You know, it's it's it's. I think that's up to the Docker community. At, at this point, if you if you read their documentation and and you do things the way they want you to do them. Um, you just run one application. You run Apache or you run whatever in Docker. Um, and so that's kind of their design constraint. And, and ours is that, that you're running some sort of init, system D or whatever. Um, I, and I guess, so that's sort of the distinction. Uh, how does snapshots and migration work with sockets and all of that? Sorry? Uh, how are sockets maintained through snapshots? Uh, right, so um, it's basically if you migrate and you migrate successfully within the TCP timeout window, everything works. Uh, it, assuming, again, you migrate to the same network and things like that. So there's no, um, we don't have any black magic that nobody else has there. We, we you know, we're, we're subject to the same uh, laws of physics that everyone else is. So. Uh, we best effort. Hope you hope it goes fast. Uh, you mentioned the image server. Is there any plan to actually have a dedicated process that can actually do the job of serving images out, like the um, Docker Hub registry, as opposed to actually having just any LXD server yep. overloading that use case? Yes, absolutely. Um, there is. Uh, there's, if you go to, I think it's registry.linuxcontainers.org today, um, we have a, it's a very simple registry uh, of um, just images that LXC provides, uh, the LXC upstream provides itself. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's no reason you couldn't just implement the API as a separate daemon and, and potentially that's what we may do uh, is just have a separate Go binary that can also, um, that it can also do that. Okay, how many more questions do we have left before we? Just, you have one? Okay. So we have like two more, so we're just gonna, two more. Okay. Uh, since you, uh, you mentioned migration and there was a question about sockets, uh, are you using the crew of uh, infrastructure of the kernel for checkpoint and restore? Yep, yeah, so we're using also the user space uh, tool as well um, okay. to, do, to be, do both. I've got a question if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, could we expect to see um, user space containerized user space apps and like the mo on the mobile phone platform? Uh, bring this tech to the to the mobile platform. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I have to think very carefully uh, about what I say here. Actually. Um, yeah. You can. <laughs> okay, let's take one more question since those are pretty short. Uh, you, lucky guy.
Hi. <laughs> We're currently using um, a, a sort of a multi-node distributed app. It's got about 14 separate Docker containers. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things. Um, there's the Docker announcements for Docker Machine and, and stuff and Docker orchestration. Are you guys planning on doing a similar thing? You mentioned the tool chain decisions were a key architectural difference. Uh, um, the, so I think our plan is to actually not get into the to the orchestration uh, business. We have uh, Canonical offers a tool called Juju that will do orchestration that will absolutely use uh, uh, LexD. Uh, for us, LexD is just a very small piece of the, of our entire story. Um, so if you, I think if you were wanting to use the the um, canonical canonical way to do things, uh, it would be to use Juju and, and uh, a tool called Maz if you're running it on your your own hardware, uh, and then that the Juju would know how to drive LexD. Um, or, for example, there's uh, uh, there was some mention of uh, OpenStack. We're, we're also doing a, a, a driver for LexD for OpenStack, so you can, if you're if you're familiar with Open, OpenStack and can use that as the driver for your infra infrastructure, then um, that will work too. So um, for us, we're not LexD is really just the container piece. There's really nothing else that we're not, you know, no networking, no storage. We're not trying to invent anything new here. It's really just this is the system container piece, and then everything else will uh, use that. So, so it's part of the bigger picture. Exactly. Yep. All right. Thanks. I think that's all we have time for. Thank you, Tiger. Yep.